Akuma Mode and the Evil Within, notorious for its incredible difficulty in which you die to one hit by anything in the game. It keeps on running to wherever I am! I needed that one challenge, that one defining achievement that makes my hairline recede six inches, the one I have nightmares about for the next ten years. Being the absolute moron I am, I thought Akuma Mode would be too easy, so I decided to take it on with a twist. I was to complete the entire Akumu playthrough in first person. For those unfamiliar, Akumu is a difficulty in The Evil Within that turns your bones into Cheeto dust. If someone so much as sneezes within a 10 foot radius of you, you will die, and it makes every single encounter, even with the weakest of enemy types, extremely booty hole clenching. Speaking of, the first place you can die in the game is when Sebastian is chased by a three headed lady who kindly wants to slice you open with her buzzsaw arm. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. After successfully avoiding her hug, like I do with my uncle at family gatherings, we make our way to the local neighbourhood. It turns out Mrs. Leona is feeding her son the guts of her victims again, and is also practising her backhand so it's ready for Wimbledon. She's not actually feeling too great, so I have to put a couple between her eyes, and pass my very first combat encounter. Her husband breaks in, pretty mad about me murdering his wife, so I also have to take him out. Two kills and zero deaths. I was feeling good. Whew, okay. First combat encounter in the game? Done! Maybe this isn't going to be so bad. Oh how naive I was. It was going to be so much worse than bad. The reason why Akuma in first person is even worse is because if you didn't know, The Evil Within is a third person game, and first person was added later by the devs. A nice option, sure, but not how the game was supposed to be played or even designed around. It feels clunky, there's no sensitivity options for aiming down sights, no aim assist, and worst of all, motion blur is always on. A war crime within itself. Back with Sebastian, I headed into town where I encountered my first big problem. I needed to get to that door. The issue, however, is I have five bullets and about ten haunted around me waiting to clap Seb's cheeks. Luckily for me, this town isn't exactly a clean place, so there's plenty of empty bottles all over the place which I use to distract the haunted and then proceed to backshot the one at the door and get inside. Inside, I met a bald dude named O'Neill, who we'll be seeing a bit more of later, only it'll be significant hotter. We then venture out into the town to find Sebastian's daughter Lily. On my travels, I came across a church which held a priest. I thought I'd be safe because I wasn't a 12 year old boy, but I was highly mistaken. Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, <laughs> that's the first one. With one death in the bag, they really started to roll in. As I went off to find a shotgun for better defence, I found one of these knife wielding young ladies who aren't too social. I also then got a little cocky as I started talking shit to one of the haunted, but was quickly put back in my place. Yeah, that's right, you can't operate doors, can you? Get the fuck outside! It's a door, bitch. 12 seconds later. Oh my. I was mistaken in my statement. <laughs> I would eventually acquire the shotgun, but getting out of the basement proved a lot harder than I initially thought, as the haunted had learned how to throw harder than my editor Sean when he picks Genji. <laughs> Oh, okay, what a fucking throw. <laughs> anyway, now I had a shotgun, it was time to go find Lily. Just kidding, I'm off to visit the hot nurse so I can get some upgrades. Alright, now it was really time to go find Lily. Except just kidding again, I also need to grab the crossbow first. Getting to the crossbow wasn't too bad, but getting out of the corner where the crossbow was located proved to be a little squeaky bum time. Luckily for me, I have a massive brain, and was able to navigate the situation with a cool head and 200 IQ tactics. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, and I have a bottle equipped. That's not good. Shoot that. Run, run, run. Oh, oh run. fucking Jesus Christ. Here I would die a couple more times until I used the ultimate strategy of running away and politely asking if I could be left alone. Oh, hello. Hi. You all right? If you could just, if you could just, if you could just not turn around. Are we good? We can't forget, Haunted were once humans themselves too. You treat them with respect, and they'll treat you the same way back. For real now though, we were back to finding Seb's daughter, and it really does make you question what kind of a father this man was. Who would let a small child out into this kind of a place alone? Maybe he was trying to dodge paying child support? Which, I mean, I can only respect as it encourages your kids to start working from an early age. If my kid isn't listening to two men talk about being entrepreneurs on a podcast by the age of five, I'm going to disown them. Anyway, my next tense encounter from this town would come from when I found your mum walking around the parking lot guarding the entrance to the shed I needed to use. At least I thought it was your mum until she started spitting at me, so I knew for sure that it couldn't be her. 
Oh dear. There you go. Shut the f up, Steve! Bash another door, smash another door. I'm in your Bring that ass here! Oh my god! Oh my god! What the fuck? Stop throwing up on me! Did you know that I can see you? Ah. <laughs> You're looking straight here. Run! Eventually, I found Lily's doll in a diner and managed to track her using radio waves? I. Sure. Anyway, they lead me to the warehouse where she could have been, and getting in there was a little bit of a pain in the ass, but nothing compared to what happened after. Once I was in there, I start getting hallucinations about this nonce with a camera who knows of Lily's whereabouts. As we exit the warehouse, I'm met by three creatures called the Spawn and have no choice but to fight them. These guys slap me around a little and force me to think of different tactics other than just trying to fight head on, something that would be very useful for my next encounter, which is where the first real challenge of the game is. Welcome to the room that I am nicknaming the casting couch, because this is where you get fucked. All Sebi boy is trying to do is open a door, but once he does, it triggers an alarm, opens more doors, and floods of haunted come for you. You are locked in and have no choice but to kill every single last one of them. At first I tried the good old zombies tactic of holding out in the corner, but it failed me. A, f a few times. So I had to play smarter, not harder, as I decided to pre-kill some of the haunted that laid on the ground, waiting for the alarm to go off until they got up and attacked me. After serving a prison sentence of six months due to that aiming, I came back to this time successfully killing the enemy that doesn't move. My only problem is that this time I realised that there was more haunted than I thought, so I would go again, killing the ones on the floor, but this time laying traps with explosive bolts. I would fail again, but after more deaths, I would eventually find all the haunted on the ground, all the best trap locations, and exploit their inability to attack me while climbing a ladder. I then finish off this last creepy bitch the same way I finish off every sexual encounter. Two sniper bullets to the face. With that stress over with, I'm sure the game doesn't get much harder. Oh for fuck's sake. The first boss of the game was here, but luckily I have a suspicious lump on my sack. I mean, a trick up my sleeve. You can skip this entire fight by simply running around the building and breaking through the door. I, however, had never done this before, so it's fair to say it didn't exactly go smoothly on my first few attempts. Open, 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 open. Stop no! right there, criminal Please scum. Leave me alone. I'm going to die, Sebastian. I'm not going to get this time out of my She's way too close. Open it, open it, open it, open it, open it. Oh no, she's way too close again. Sebastian, open the door! You are a fucking piece of shit! Woo! I think I got it. I got it. How cute is that, eh? And you even get a little cheese for it too. With the first boss down, it was finally time for some downtime, except just kidding, the camera nonce is back, and this time he brings the second boss with him. The worst part about this boss isn't all of the premarital leg that she's showing, it's actually the fact that she can freeze the timer. All you have to do to beat this boss is last 90 seconds in the room with her, which is made even harder by the fact that she is also trying to detach your head from your body. Eventually I figured out a strat to shock bolt her so she can't freeze the timer, and just kept running until the 90 seconds was up. The second toughest 90 seconds of my entire life. Next to the 90 seconds I have to wait for my bagel to toast in the morning. You thought I was referring to the 90 seconds I lost in the bedroom, didn't you? I, I wish it was 90 seconds. Next up, we have the cum room. <laughs> I'm not making a crude joke, this is really what we're currently in. Are you serious? There's even a cum boss, but he's pretty friendly, as long as you sprint past him, until he drags you back in like it's December 1st and you have to put a few bullets in him. Poor guy probably just wanted a hug. So later on, I feel a lump in my back and get bent over a desk, but unfortunately it's just a woman with a gun. It's Hoffman, and she's here to help me, aka stay in the safe house and not actually help me. She tells me the way to finding the camera nonce is to destroy his paintings, so we set off into the town to desecrate some art. Unfortunately, blocking my path was two London locals as they roamed around with knives in their hands ready to shank me up. Yeah, he was talking, he wants to scrap you. Yeah. What the? What he wants, you want to smoke with you? What? He wants to smoke Yeah. God, I fucking hate the AI in this game. As I went on to destroy the artwork, I was beginning to think ahead to the camera nonce fight. I struggled with this fight playing the game regularly. How was I going to do this hit list? Would I get over 100 deaths on this fight alone? Would this be the point I gave up on the challenge? Well, I was about to answer all of those questions I had. Please do. There you go. Come, 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 come. Okay. Idiot. I might be the greatest gamer of all time. 
I'm actually the greatest gamer alive. Are you sure about that? Please don't kill me! <laughs> you fool. You fool. The fuck you me, you little shit? Maybe I am a fool. Correct. Okay, this is easy. No! Whoa, okay. What? Okay, this is easy. Ouch, <laughs> okay. What killed me? Oh, fuck. What? So I had my answer to all those questions, with my death counter nearly doubled in that one fight alone. I had completed the first half of the game, with a respectable 74 deaths. The second half of the game was, uh, so much worse. <laughs> I wish I could say I doubled my deaths. I wish I could say I tripled my deaths. I unfortunately cannot say either. My half-mast I had from the high of defeating the Cameronauts would soon come crashing down as I fought three firemen in a room. No, not firemen as in the hunks that put out fires for a living, I mean literal men on fire. They're extremely aggressive and will always get back up, no matter how much damage you do, unless you step on their heads. Not only that, but during the last boss, I expended a lot of ammo, so my current resource count was as sparse as a dinner plate in Somalia. My death count just kept rising and my sanity kept plummeting. Just the explosive bolt. Put it there. There we go. I think that hit all of them. Now I just gotta stamp on their heads, right? The fire kills me! No! With that over and my death counter ticking towards 100, I pressed on to find a geezer who goes by the name of Father Theodore. Apparently, Lily is with her mum, Myra, and Father Theodore knows where they are, but won't tell us until we join him. We decline his invite, because we all know what priests secretly do in those confession rooms, and he gets mad, wiping us out with a pool of blood. We wake up in a cabin, and here is where we beat Torres, as we both have to hold out together in this cabin, Call of Duty Zombie style, as the haunted attack us. Now I had two humans huge problems. One, I was still working with minimal ammo. Two, Torres is more inconsistent than Fernando Torres. Sometimes you got Liverpool Torres, and she'd absolutely slay, put in a hard shift and actually be useful. Other times you got Chelsea Torres, literally useless. She didn't know her teeth from her toes, her ABCs, or how to use that AR in her hands. It was like fighting in a war with an actual woman. Due to both of those reasons, I would not only reach my 100th death, Oh, Sebastian, what a dodge! A few inches later. Oh, fuck! There's number 100. But I would also go a few other, just for luck, until Torres clutched up, killing the knifey bitch, and we finished off the rest together. It's a shame Sebastian is committed to his wife, because Torres is real wifey material. Just look at how she effortlessly lifts this tree. We could all use a woman like Torres, who could carry us to bed like that and tuck us in for a good nap. Am I right, lads? So, we had to make it to Mummy, I mean, we had to make it to Torres' bunker, but standing between us and that was a load of firemen. Luckily, I'm a pro speedrunner and know the strategy of simply just running through them all. I'm kidding, of course. I did this on a whim when I got seen, and it worked surprisingly well. At the bunker, I confess my undying love for Torres and then pop off to see O'Neill, the bald matey, from earlier because we need his bald powers for something. Remember what I said earlier about meeting O'Neill again? Yeah, you'll, you'll see in a second. But first I had to make my way through this cheek clenching sequence where a haunted was around every corner, waiting to tear me apart. I felt more unwelcomed than a Jehovah's Witness in a Jewish neighbourhood. Anyway, we make it to O'Neill, and I hear some commotion between him and Hoffman behind the door, so I burst in to save her from this oppressive male, and it turns out he's undergone a little makeover. The O'Neill boss fight is known as a tricky one, but I have a real speedrun tactic for you to follow. Of course, first you need to know what were my results as proof that this this actually works. Well, this is my deaths before the fight, this is my deaths after the fight. So did my speedrun strat work? Absolutely not. The strat was supposed to be blind him with smoke, stealth stab him, and you can animation lock him to infinitely stab him. That obviously didn't work, but it's okay, because the animation lock is actually quite hard. If you fail this, you can just keep on smoking him, and keep on stabbing him. I, however, ran into one major issue. O'Neill's AI always knows where you are. It doesn't matter if I was in the smoke, out the smoke, at my nan's house, this guy would just turn in my direction and walk into me, blowing my stealth every time. O'Neill, you can suck my gooch, sir. Whoa, okay. Fuck's sake. It keeps on running to wherever I am. Bro, look at that shit. <laughs> Stop walking into the flames, man. George, seriously, man. I thought I had the strat down. This should have been so simple. 
stop running into the flames, George! Stop running into the flames! Oh my god! These motherfucking flames, I swear they get closer every time I play! Like, what? Where are you running there? How do you know I'm there? What do you mean? Let me stealth kill him. Let me stealth kill him. Let me stealth hit him. Game, what are you doing? Yep, look, he just turns around where I am, bro. I think that's it. I think I've stabbed three times. Oh, oh my God. O'Neill was down and it was time to continue searching for Myra and Lily. We get a vision of Sebastian's two up, two down family home. And on Lily's bedroom door, we see the reason that Seb let her go. That drawing that says daddy. I would also boot my child onto the streets if they drew something that made me look this ugly. When we wake up from the hallucination, Torres is dead. Unless Seb wants to hit that cold, I guess it's over for their love triangle that didn't actually exist in game, but it did in my heart. On the bright side, we now had an AR and on the even brighter side, we had to do the firewalk. I meant it was just literally bright. So bright in fact that after dying a couple of times, I had to take a quick break because my eyes hurt looking into the flames for so long while simultaneously trying to make sure Hoffman didn't get eaten alive. The latter part of that plan goes out of the window as she does indeed get eaten alive, but we make it through and continue to press on finding Myra and Lily. After all this, the game actually chilled out for a little bit. No impossibly hard challenges, no back-to-back -back bosses, just regular old enemies and my high gamer IQ. Uh, I'm in a rough, <laughs> I'm in a rough tight situation here. Shock bolt, go, do your thing. Yes, please. Run. Oh my god, if this actually works, if this actually works, if this actually works, my G, if this actually works. Oh, 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 oh. I died a few more times, mostly to this room full of the three-headed dog things, but eventually found Father Theodore again. He made me face my past, and by that he meant I had to fight three bosses from the Evil Within one back to back. I thought this was going to be more pain and suffering, but to my surprise it was actually really easy. The only downside was I lost a lot more ammo, which would come back to bite Sebastian in his big juicy ass later on. With all those bosses done, Myra would appear, murdering Daddy Theo and transporting us to the land of Coom. Once again, I'm not telling a crude joke. This really was the land of Coom. We followed Myra through the lands while fighting off haunted that were covered in this dried Coom. <laughs> These guys were stiffer than my bedsheets when I was single. They were also harder too, as that number on my death counter just kept rising due to me having to play like a snail to conserve ammo. Why was I conserving ammo you ask? Well, it was only right that in Coom land, there was a Coom boss. And for most bosses, I had an efficient way of getting past them. Apart from O'Neill, fuck that guy. But this boss, it was just a straight up fight to the death where I had to use all my ammo. It was one that he won many, many times. So many in fact that I reached my 200th death and reward myself by going to bed so I could try again tomorrow. I honestly don't think I'm surpassing 200 deaths. Like, I think I'm going to stay at 200 deaths for the rest of the game. I'm going to complete with 200 deaths. <laughs> okay, I may have been wrong. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> god, I really need to start moving out of the way. Woo! Oh, okay. With a respectable 204 deaths, I headed into the last boss fight with a mutated Myra. Sebastian could have had Torres, but no, he chose to stay loyal. This is why you cheat. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to the class of like, welcome fuck's sake. Anyway, welcome to class, lads and ladies. Today we're going to be learning how to fuck up the last boss in The Evil Within 2 and make your experience way more painful than it has to be. So there's this strat on this boss. After initially shooting Myra in the stomach, you can time an explosive bolt and skip an entire stage. I timed this perfectly first time but died. I then timed it perfectly again and all was going swimmingly. After this, you freeze bolt the little spiders and continue shooting the weak points on her back. I would die again while doing this and this is where the massive problem came into play. It didn't spawn me at the beginning of the boss fight, but it spawned me at the point where the little spiders came out. The problem was, it also had used the freeze bolts that I had, so I had no freeze bolts to deal with the spiders, but I also had no gunpowder left to craft more freeze bolts because it thought I already used the freeze bolts. And I had pretty much no other ammo due to the Coom boss fight, and although it was dropping ammo in this fight, it was nowhere near enough. This put me in a terrible position because I had to readjust my whole strategy due to my now severed lack of ammo and gunpowder. What's the lesson here? Just restart the boss. But I'm a stubborn little bitch, so I continued from this spawn point far too many times. No, it chased after me! No, no way! Fuck off, little spider bastard! Alright, let's see if I can get three off before she slams. 
No, I can't. I, I don't even know what killed me there. Was that Myra? Oh, god damn it. Mm. <laughs> oh, the, uh, no. Oh. What? Finally, after too much pain, I would make it to shooting off one of Myra's arms and created a new checkpoint. Was this any better? Fuck no. I still had no ammo for anything other than my pistol, so I had to do the entire boss fight with my pistol. With my extremely low ammo count, that also meant I had to hit pretty much every shot, or I would literally just run out of ammo and not be able to finish the boss. A pain I can't quite put into words, but maybe George from the past can. Oh my god, the fucking choke! It's unreal! Okay, hit two and he's hit four. Nope, 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 nope. Please, please, please. No! What killed me, man? Oh, oh well, thanks for getting in my way. Yep, sick. You just ruined the run, you little fucking tentacle bitch. What the fuck, man? I could just walk into her aura and I die. Wow, I stood there so many times before and it hasn't got me. Oh my god. No! <laughs> so, over an hour later, with 70 more deaths racked up on the counter, I finally defeated my. Oh my god, I'm going insane. I think I've lost like all my hairline. I finally defeated Myra, and therefore had completed my greatest challenge yet of defeating the Evil Within 2 on Akumu in first person. Seb and Lily drove off into the sunset, along with my mental state. I'm sad that this isn't a real achievement, but I hope you understand now why I said this was a real achievement due to it being in the Evil Within 1, but for some reason not being in the second game. I'm sure there'll be people in the comments already proving me wrong that there wasn't just one person that had done this, but I searched YouTube, I searched Reddit, I Googled it, I searched everywhere I could to find someone who had completed this full challenge, and I could only ever find one person by the name of Ella Jazz. There's videos of other people starting it, but no proof of them actually completing it. All in all, even with that last boss fight, and even with the O'Neill fight, I still had a great time. This is actually really fun to go for. I would advise it. Go for it. I recommend it. Just, uh, yeah, be prepared to lose your hairline, I guess. Thank you to Sean for editing this. If you want to see more achievement videos, click the video on screen. And, uh, yeah, stay sus. I love you all. Mwah. Good night, boys. <laughs>